Hello, back again. And this is a job that I've been putting off for ages, but I've got to look into it. The rear suspension. So on this car, it's got hydraulic suspension. So it's not just a spring and a shock absorber. It's got hydraulics in there to make it go up and down to smooth out the bumps. And also when there's a heavy load in the back, it's supposed to lift itself up. So the hydraulic part is only in the back of this car as far as the suspension is concerned, not as far as the brakes, but as far as the suspension is concerned. So everybody always says that the spheres have gone on these, the green spheres. I don't know if they've gone on this car or not, but I do know that we have leaks. I found a leak behind the rear wheel there. I did find a leak underneath where the uh, the brakes are but that is designed to leak so I don't want to buy that valve for £500 just yet I'd rather see how much it's leaking so maybe it will still be okay with that for the time being but we definitely got a leak by the rear wheel there and I presume the spheres have gone but I don't know if that's the case but everyone always says that they need changing so I've bought some so in this tiny box here I have two spheres and a few little parts for the rear leak just basically little tiny little pipes and unions and stuff like that all of this box here came to 228 pounds again it's a Rolls Royce so little things like this everything like that all adds up so these are the spheres in here apparently you get the same or similar ones on a Citroen maybe it's cheaper to get them elsewhere I'm sure it probably is the problem is it's doing the research when you don't know what you're doing it's doing the research into it so obviously if you don't know what you're doing you're going to have to pay a premium and i understand that so what i'm going to try to do in this video is sort out the leak behind the rear wheel there and also change the spheres over which are in the boot you might notice some new equipment here this was all lent to me by brian so i've got a 20 ton little uh, bottle jack there and i've got a two and a half ton nice heavy duty big jack here so i'm going to be jacking up this side of the car get the wheel off i'm going to be putting an axle stand under a bottle jack that jack probably even use my old jack there and between all of that i will feel confident working underneath it now i've got to empty out the boot to get to the spheres and they are hidden of course they're hidden away so they are hidden away one underneath that area in there and one in there in that area there so uh, it should be fun now i've got to depressurize the system but what you're supposed to do is turn the ignition on and keep pumping the brake pedal until the lights come on here and then keep pumping 30 or 40 or 50 times more than that but the uh on this car the lights are on as soon as i turn on the ignition anyway there's no power in here and even when i press the brake now because this car hasn't been running ages uh, i can feel there's nothing there so i will do this 30 or 40 or 50 times just to make sure but i'm sure the pressure's gone from the system anyway obviously you're dealing with high pressure here it could be very dangerous to work on but what i'm going to do to begin with is there's a little bleed nut at the back there so i'm going to uh, be bleeding that there and hopefully then that will release whatever pressure there is well not i'm releasing the pressure now but hopefully that will drain whatever there is in the back there and then uh, i'm hoping it's going to be safe to work on now i'll say that in this video it's different when i'm working on a few electronic bits but uh, do not copy what you see in this video i've never done this before I don't know what I'm doing so uh, yeah just to take it purely for entertainment don't take this as a how-to let's get the car jacked up and let's see what happens I hope this goes okay we are ready to rock and roll I've got the wheel off now I've got the main jack in the middle there and I've put the other jack under that jacking point and the bottle jack under the other jacking point that you use with the jack in the back just you know if you get a flat tire uh, that one puts this one to shame. That one's so nice to work with. It feels so big and sturdy. Thing is, it's still only two and a half tons, but what I'm thinking is, let's say if this car is, it's not, but let's say if it was three tons, surely that jack would be okay to use because isn't a lot of the weight getting thrown over this side. I mean, we still have two wheels on the floor there. So let's say if the car was three tons, what sort of weight would you have there? Would it be half? Would it be less than half? Or would it be more than half because it's still wanting to kind of come down on this way here? But anyway, I think the car, I don't know what this car is, it's roughly about two and a half tons. So uh, I, uh, I'm sure that the jack is absolutely fine to use. That's what I'm thinking anyway, but you can always put it down in the comments. Now, obviously I'm not really doing much work under the car here. I'm just gonna get to the bleed nipple and then the rest is gonna be on this bit here which should be fun to work on, and in the uh, the boot. 
which is going to be a proper contortionist job but uh, let's get to this bleed nipple to begin with I don't know whether this has even ever been undone so it might be seized rock solid I've already sprayed a little bit of penetrating oil on about an hour ago but I'm going to spray a bit more on now I'll try to show you where it is right <laughs> I don't think it's going to fit hold on now let me go under here so basically we're under the rear wheel arch here and just wiggling over wiggling using my head to walk and now what can you see here this is it here here yeah. so i'm gonna have to get a spanner and i'm gonna have to turn that but because it's just kind of on this block which is quite weak i'm gonna have to get some big adjustable spanner or something or mole grips to hold it in place and then try to turn that because i think in turning this i think because it all looks quite seized i think it might shear off the bottom here now i've got my glasses on in case i get it in the eye and i've got bubble wrap underneath me because there's a couple of drains and i don't want anything to go flying off down there okay now i sprayed some penetrating oil on just to see what spanner would work on it how nice would it be to have a pit or a ramp to put the car up on ten i think i need an eleven yeah it's eleven right okay oh i've got a feeling this is going to snap off It's going to snap straight off. How am I going to grip this? Annoying because there's big arms in the way, this big trailing arm, I can't get to it from above. So I'm having to try to. If I put the adjustable spanner on here, I don't think I'm going to be able to undo it with the other one. But still, I'll try. Lefty Lucy, here we go about an inch to work with. Come on. Ooh. Guess what? It's seized. Surprise, surprise. Uh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Did you hear it crack? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I can hear noise. I can hear noise. I can hear like a... Let me get out of here. I heard a little fizzing noise. Now, let's see. Is that going to go in there or it's going to go all over Brian's jack, isn't it? Well, let me try to loosen it some more. They're fully loose. There's nothing coming out. Right, so I suppose that must mean it's leaked everything. Well, I'm gonna leave that loose. What I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to just bounce up and down on in the uh, back of the car, but not go crazy. It's obviously it's up on the, it's up on the jack. I'll leave the camera where it is. That came off all right. Now, I wanna see if anything's gonna come out. Don't think anything came out. Don't want to bounce too much because it's all jacked up, you see. I'm not gonna have the strength to lift it up. Uh, okay, well, I heard a tiny bit of a fizz. It, just, it was like a little gurgle. Let me just press the brake pedal a couple of times, see if that makes any difference. I don't think there's anything in that. Well, I don't think there's any pressure. I think, but I say think, I don't know. I think I'm safe to work on. I'm gonna start on this one here. 
And just in case any of you are playing along at home, I put the big adjustable spanner on this block and then the smaller spanner on this and you can see now it's turning. Yeah. So that's, uh, I'm not going to undo it completely because I might introduce dirt into it. But unless that's blocked there, I'll tell you what, should we undo it just to see if anything drips out? Oh, there we go. Okay, well I can see kind of green fluid, let's just do that bit back up, but it's not spurting out at me, is it? So that's uh, that's all good. Okay, so I've got loads of different things. I've got a olive rear drain, I've got a new pipe, I have got a drain tube fitting kit and a, uh, a nuts rear drain tube. So I think that's everything, I think. So I should be able to replace it from I mean, it all looks perfect, but it is uh, there was a patch here, so I presume this must be faulty. So I should be able to replace it from here, right the way to this nut, is what I'm thinking. So, to begin with, because I don't know how this comes apart, I am going to open up this one here, and let's see. So this one does, and that one does. So if I was to grab this one here, I should be able to just undo it, shouldn't I? I should be able to undo the nut here. Now, let's go small, because everything's going to be quite delicate. Right, so it looks like it's a 10, and let's hold this one here. Actually, should we undo it from the strut to begin with? So, lefty Lucy. Still got my glasses on in case it spurts out at me. Now hold on one second. No, I'm tightening it there. Do you know what? Maybe it just needed tightening. Anyway, I've, whoa. See, the other side hasn't got any of this. It's just a pipe jammed straight into it. Mind you, look, whoever did that, it must have been working since then. So let's let's just change this over. I said lefty Lucy, but of course I need to, need to be doing it looking here. So I was actually tightening it there. So I need to go around this way. There we go. Now, is anything going to spurt out at me? Hopefully not. Maybe I should get the bucket. One second. The bowl. Right, the bowl's under it now. Here we go. No, nothing at all. Wow. Okay, well how does this come off here then? I oh, know it has a little olive type thing. Look, this tiny little olive. So the olive must crush on to whatever's in there. Oh, that's going to be a bit of a pain. See, if it's leaking from there, I have to change that olive. It looks like there's an olive in there. So I'm not going to be able to take that off without doing damage. I'm just going to see if I was to get a screwdriver and gently lever it from there. I don't want to break the whole strut, you see. Here we go, it's coming. I'm being very gentle. I'm not levering it, I'm just twisting the screwdriver. Hope you can see this. The sunlight's here, so it's hard for the camera to focus on this bit. Come on. There we go. Excellent. I took it off, including the olive. Little olive in there. Excellent, right, okay. Do you know, I'm going to keep all these bits because then if they're not faulty, I could always put them over the other side because believe it or not, all these things here cost, let me quickly work it out, roughly just under 20 quid. So uh, yeah, it's not cheap. So that's not too bad either. Okay, let's now do this bottom one here. Right, so... 8 mil did that one. There we go, so how have they done this? So there is uh, one of them, and then like a weird thing that goes in there. So have I got that part? Yes, I have. That's this part here, isn't it? Everything looks perfect, but... So really, if I thought about it, I didn't need to buy this one here, did I? Because this one is going to be fine. 
but still I got it all just there uh, just in case so let's bring the camera down here that came off really really easy amazing so now this pipe do I have to cut the pipe to size I doubt it hmm it looks too long I wonder is that gonna be a problem yeah well, that's annoying I've got to cut the pipe to size Okay, so now let's put all new parts on. It doesn't matter which way this goes round, does it? It's the same both sides. So that's going to go on here, like that. And the olive is going to go on here. So obviously, when you do it up, the olive crushes, just like uh, an olive in uh, plumbing, you know, central heating. Now, does it matter which way this goes around? It doesn't look like it does. Looks to be the same both sides. There we go. So, we should be okay to tighten up now. All I'm gonna do is just gonna wear uh, clean up the uh, unions up here a little bit and then I think we can tighten them up see maybe the fluid isn't getting this far there could be a blockage in a pipe earlier on because there's like uh, valves and stuff to not put anything to, towards the back hydraulics if the brakes are not working so obviously the brakes are the most important but it's working on the same circuit i think so it will only go past the valve if there's enough pressure for the brakes so maybe if there's no pressure in the brakes then it won't be coming as far as here okay here goes so to begin with we can do we can do this one on the floor can't we This is going to go here. It's a shame I haven't got some. I'd be tempted to put some sealing compound on, but I mean, I have got that LSX stuff, which is really good. It's just that I don't know whether it's going to have some reaction with the fluid. So it doesn't look like there's anything on these. So let's just hopefully let the olives do their job. So what's going to happen is that's going to get crushed into here as I do this up, and hopefully then it will be okay. So in hindsight now, I reckon if I just tightened up these, the old ones, I think it would have been fine. I reckon they just needed a little tighten. Right, I don't know how tight to do this, but I'm not going to go crazy on it. Mm. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to blow through here, see if it's coming through. Right, okay. With my blowing, it's okay, but obviously there's going to be much more pressure in the system than that. So now, this little one has to fit onto here. And try to put the olive on. There we go. And now this one here. Okay, I'm just going to do it hand tight for a, for a minute because, do you know what? This is going to be the most dodgy one here because if I break that thing there, then I need to replace this whole strut, which is going to cost a fortune. So this is going to go in here like that. That's going to go there. Oh, it's seeding in further. This is going to go round. I think I can just do that up. 
hoping it will go into its place. I'll have to keep pressure on the green pipe going in. Yeah, I couldn't have really left it any longer. But the good news is it, there is a bit there's a bit of adjustment up here because it can uh, you know it can give out this way a little bit can't it I'm Trying to keep the pipe going straight in here Just don't know how tight to do it I think I'm going to leave it at that cuz it's only clamping onto the plastic Right now we've got this one to do here keeping pressure in at the same time. So I presume this always remains a bit flexible. So you can still turn it. would that do? Oh the sun's right in the wrong place but I can't put you over my side because I need to see what I'm doing. I hope some of this is coming out. Right I'm gonna call it a day there. I mean it's on it feels like loose. Uh, if it starts spurting out there then I know to tighten it more but I don't want to go crazy on it I mean it was loose beforehand wasn't it but saying that it was spraying out beforehand yeah I'm gonna leave it at that well that went I think really well so I'm very very happy with that I've just actually noticed that this uh, thing here the uh, what's it called the cable tie I've put it right onto I wonder could I've got that in further Maybe that was the problem, maybe it needed to go in a bit more. Mind you, it was sticking all the way out onto here. As long as the olives gripped onto it, it should be okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I know it's all new, so if it spurts out there, it means I just need to tighten it up more. I'm going to keep all this old stuff because I don't actually think it's faulty. I think it just needs needs a tightening. Right now, we've got to try to do the spheres in the boot. Should be fun. I'm going to have to empty the boot out first of all. Okay, I put the wheel back on and lowered the car and I bounced the back here and I heard it spurt. And look, I can see green fluid in here mixed in with the oil. Can you see that in there? I definitely heard it go like that a few times. Right, okay, I'm going to leave that there. And now I've got to empty out all this. Obviously, I didn't mention it, the battery in this at the moment is completely out because it's gone flat again. So uh, I've got the battery completely removed from the car. You have to make sure you don't have the battery connected when doing this. So while I'm emptying out the boot full of junk, I just want to show you some of the welding that I was doing on the other rear side valance. You know, I've already replaced the other one, so I didn't want to go into too much detail because you've seen the sort of process done before. But I just want to take you through it because I've got a new welder and I just wanted to show that to you and a few other little bits. I just want to kind of keep you updated on the stuff I'm doing, even if I don't show you it all in full on videos. So as you can see, I've chopped out that bit along there now. That's all the old rust that came out of it. Lovely. And I'm just starting to repair the inner pieces. So you can see here there was a, well, you can't see because it's covered, but there was a missing bit up here. So now I've uh, put a plate on there. I have to weld it now. And also I've just started to do this bit here. Again, I have to weld that. And then I've just got to keep working my way along. And then once I've done all the inner bits, then I can put the outer bit on by cutting out the bottom of that section there. Well, I've got myself a different welder. This is an interesting one here because it's only a small little thing, a draper, and uh, it is gasless, so there's no bottle on the back. Basically, the wire itself has flux built into it, I suppose, a bit like solder wire. It's got flux built into it. The good thing about that is it doesn't matter on a windy day 
it should still give you a good weld. Now I'm really enjoying it and it feels much nicer to work with than my older one, not my one, my brother's older one. The problem is, it's quite powerful. I believe the minimum one on this is 50 amps, so it's really easy to blow through thin metal, but it appears to be good doing, a, doing a good job. You know, the welds feel to be nice. And basically I made a mistake round here and uh, I welded up the bottom, but then I didn't weld up I welded up the top here when I didn't need to because I wanted to get the, the level at the top ready and so I had to undo three welds and I had to grind and pull and whack and whack with the screwdriver and you can see it left the welds behind there and broke the metal so it's definitely working well. I'm just going to try to show you a little bit of welding with it. The downside is though that it splats a lot so I suppose more cleaning up is needed and also there'll be a chance off there more chance of causing a fire if you had anything flammable nearby. I've got it on its lowest setting. show you these welds. So you can see them up here. So yeah I'm really happy I wish I bought it earlier. I got it for £120 on Amazon but the same ones in tool station in the UK here for £130. So although it looks a tiny little thing it seems to do the job. Okay we're getting there now so I've got it all welded on both sides and also grinded it back and I've also put a repair piece in up here so that's uh, new metal here now so now I'm gonna get the filler out and hopefully it should all blend in okay okay so I'm still filling and sanding we're starting to make progress now and while I'm waiting for things to dry I am doing other little jobs Nothing interesting, otherwise I'd be filming it all. This is where the spare wheel's kept. So I've just dropped it and I'm just using the wire brush to give it a nice good scrape, get all the old surface rust off. And then I'll probably give it a paint that hammer right, I think. You have to undo this bolt here in order to release it. So you undo it here and then what happens is this is normally turned the other way. And then when it drops so far, you can twist it and then you can drop it down. Apparently there's supposed to be a nice little handle you can put in here to gently put it to the floor. I can't find the handle in my car though. Anyway, more bad news. I've got a feeling there's going to be more and more bad news as I go along. I uh, was poking around here and then I noticed a tiny, 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 tiny little pinhole. And then I started tapping it with a hammer and it just gave way. So, but the rest of it does look good. And if you look in here, it all looks pretty nice inside. So, I think I'm just going to put a patch on there. Obviously, a professional would replace the outer sill, but I'm already, this car is a full-on money pit. There's already a patch on the other side that was done professionally by a garage. If you have a look around here, there's already a patch down here. So obviously, it's where they go, just here. So I'm just going to be putting a patch this side as well. I think it will be all right because the uh, the rest looks all right and the inner bits look okay. What I'm a little bit confused about it, there is actually a hole going right the way through there. Can you see? You can see my uh, hand the other side. Now I presume that's a good thing because that lets the water, that does, if water does get in there, it allows it to come out. But at the same time, I'm a bit unclear why water would be getting in there in the first place. I can't find that hole on the other side, yet I can't find any rust on the other side of this. This is all solid metal, so I'm not really sure what's going on. I did get my hand in here, I've got to be careful because it's really sharp, and I did get a few kind of like bits of br uh, black dried sludge along here. So obviously it looks like crud does get in here, unless of course it's splashing up through these bits here. 
not too sure because you can feel the hole on the other side of these things. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna put a patch on that and just keep working on filling and sanding and hopefully we'll get there. Okay, some of you might find this interesting. So what I'm gonna do here is, rather than putting a patch on it, I am actually going to try to weld a bit of metal perfect to size, you know what I mean? And then I can grind down the, uh, the weld and maybe it might look nicer than the other side. So what I've done is, I've just cut a bit of cardboard, put it inside and then I've used a pencil just to mark around it. So now I'm gonna take that template here down to the shed and I'm gonna use some 1.2 millimeter steel and uh, yeah angle grind it out into that shape and then I'm going to put it in here and hopefully I'll be able to fill up the weld all the way around the edges using those little things that you've seen in the other episodes you know they're little kind of clamps and then I can just seam weld it all the way around the edge okay I'll cut out the 1.2 mil metal and I think we're going to be okay so I need to get some tacks in and then I think I'll be able to hammer that into place and then weld up the gaps around the edge. So I think when you're doing this, you're supposed to leave like a mil or two mil for the weld to have somewhere to go. And also I've got to get the bend on it right as well. I've got a bit too much of a bend on it at the moment, so I just need to reduce that bend down a bit. Okay, so I've got it in place now, ready to be tacked. Now obviously I can't get to the other side of this. This is one of these little things and you're supposed to put a little bolt or something that side there and then as you tighten it up the bolt in the back grabs everything together but I'm only going to put a tack I think I'm going to start at the top so I can tack here and here and then maybe along here as well I need to put it a bit more into place and then you see it means I can lift this up a little bit take my bolt out take this out and then I'll be able to weld the rest up okay unfortunately I just can't do it because my welder just keeps burning straight through it's just too powerful which is a real shame even on the lowest setting so I'm gonna have to revert to my old welder because I can lower it right down I think that one goes down to 30 amps and this one here is 50 amps so yeah bit of a shame that uh, I just can't even if I just hold it on there for a couple of seconds it's just basically burning right through so this one on a really low setting appears to be doing the job so you can see now I'm just putting little tacks around the place and I'm just gonna keep tacking all the way around until it's all done and then I'll grind it back and hopefully it might look okay. Well, I'm not gonna lie, that was trying. I ran out of eight mil wire and then uh, I tried going over to six mil wire and I just had a complete mare. But anyway, I think I've uh, sorted it now. I had to bend this little, there wasn't enough kind of tension on this bit here. So I had to bend this bit in more uh, to put more pressure on the wire. Eventually I did get it. I dread to think how much wire I've wasted. <laughs> but anyway, the welder is definitely better. This welder is 100% better for uh, thin metal like this here. So now what I'm gonna do is, you can see a few, quite a few bits where I've missed. And with the holes, when it blows a hole, I dread to think how much wire <laughs> is on the inside of this. But, because uh, the wire shoots straight through, you see, before you, uh, before you realize. So what I'm gonna do is grind it all back now, see what we're left with. I'll probably have to fill up some holes again. But uh, it's, I don't want to dent it, but it's on there anyway. Okay, so I've given it one pass with the grinder, but I need to do it more. And I also need to do a bit more welding here to fill up these holes. But if you look now, I think it's going to be okay. I think it's better than it was anyway. Okay, so I'm nearly, nearly there now. I grinded this back and I filled it. And as you can see now, I'm hoping it will be okay. It's not perfect. I could have done with grinding this back a little bit more, but it's all gonna be under sealed anyway. So I really don't think you'll see it. And also chrome strip down here as well. So the only time you see this bit is when you're underneath the car, but I think that will be all right. The back's looking pretty good as well. So what I'm gonna do now is primer filler, then gray filler, and then I can put some of the base coat on, some of the graphite gray. There's something so nice about the gray primer. I think it's because it's kind of just completely matte, so there's no reflections on it, so it just makes things look uh, so nice. But it really finishes it off. So you can see that's that bit there, 
around and this bit down here so it looks okay so I've got this line coming along here and then it kind of disappears into this bit which I think it did originally so uh, yeah I'm happy with that once I put some stone chip on that I think it will be just just fine Right, the base coat and the stone chip will be in another episode. Right, now, so the boot's emptied. Let's get back to these green spheres and let's see if we can make sense of what's going on. Right, all emptied out. I haven't seen this carpet in a long time. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into my happy place. So, does this just come out like so? Yes, it does. Look at all that. It's gone right the way through there. What is that? That's an old rivet. Do you know what? I think the carpets will come up really clean. Even though they look a mess because they're going to be really good quality carpets. I think once I start shampooing them and scrubbing them, I bet they end up coming up really good. Such a shame that the driver's one is missing. Right, I don't think I need to go any further than that because, let's have a look. I mean, part of me is curious as to what the base of the floor looks like. I already know that it needs welding in this corner here because I was poking through the other day. This is like glued down. Yeah, I'm going to leave that for the time being. So now I'm going to give that a quick sweep out and it should be nice for me to lie in because I need to lie in it to get into these corners. Actually, I need to take this off here as well and I need to undo this battery thing up here. So uh, yeah, I need to undo all that. Make sure that, well, the battery's not in so it doesn't matter if the wires do short but I need to make sure I make a note of where everything is. Uh, I don't think those corner carpets, these are going to be glued down, so they're going to be staying. I'll just have to cover them with cloths. See, this here is the pipe that I was talking about when I was trying to fix up the aerial. That wasn't connected, so any water that comes through here, maybe when it's up, is going to uh, go straight down and sit at the bottom of the thing in there. And it is weird, the, uh, the front bit here was much more corroded than the back bit. So maybe not having that pipe connected has led to more water going down there and just being sat in there. You see all the uh, welds in here. See? Right, so I'm just going to uh, put that back on off camera because I want that to be on properly. So I suppose if it's possible for water to get in there, you really make, need to make sure that that is properly sealed in there. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's just going to drip straight down the inside, isn't it? So well, yeah, my pipe is in place now. Let me show you underneath. You can just see it there. And there it is, sticking out over there. So now any water coming down through there will just go straight out onto the ground. Well, look what I've just found. I was just sweeping up in here and I thought oh, there's a bit of tape here. Maybe it's to keep the carpet down, but it's not. It's a Rolls Royce service plate. So look at that. Is that where they uh, originally, is that how they used to stamp the services in? That's really, really nice, isn't it? And you can see one's been scraped into it. Maybe JB is the person that did it. I like that. I'll keep it covered up just to keep it nice and secure. Okay, so to undo these, it looks like we've got some screws here, here, there and there. And I presume the top will just uh, drop down then. But I also have to do a little bit of work on that switch up there. Let's quickly do that now. Ah, ah back in my happy place. Oh, so comfortable. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Better not pose like that. Right, okay. Let's uh, undo these. So whilst I'm posing like an idiot, let's give a shout out to the massive members. This month, the My Mate Vince Massive are KipDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, DJVG, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, Kenneth Blenstrop Sorensen, Gabe McCandless, Extrem 401, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, and Zeke's C. Massive, massive thank you guys. Right, so we've got a flathead screw here which is already undone. Well, that comes off there, make sure I don't lose that. Oh, we've got one of those things for the aerial again that you have to undo. 
Now, oh, and I can see that this is all chewed up around here. Yeah, look how loose everything is. This has all been uh, undone, I would say, many times. I'm not complaining, though. There we go, right, okay. And just little straps here. The same the other side. Refer to handbook for position of hazard warning triangle. We've got a little thing here. Right. Now, is the bottom gonna come out? No, there's some sort of screws. There's screws at the bottom as well. Here we go. Yes, excellent. Look at that. It's actually got wood in here. And it looks like some sort of hardwood. Unless it's stained. Is it varnished? I don't know. Interesting, isn't it? You just wouldn't expect to have bits of wood there. And I wonder why they haven't used one long bit here, why there's two. Were they just using up scraps of what they had? Yeah. Okay, remember it's not seen. Uh, right, okay, we have access to the fuel tank. That all looks nice, nice and clean. Oh, and I can see pipe work here with the green, with the green uh, things. That gives you access to more of the pipe work. Right, excellent. I'm not sure if the fuel gauge is working either because when, well, I don't think it's working properly because when uh, I, I got it, taken for the test drive the fuel gauge was sort of flapping everywhere so I think what I need to do is when I get bits sorted on the car like the rear suspension and uh, get it all uh, you know looking like it's roadworthy then really I do need to get it on the road to fix things like this so even when I get it on the road there will still be loads of things like the kick down stuff like this that will need working on right so at long last we can clearly now see the spheres they're grey on this car but the ones I've bought are green. My slight worry is this is like uh, just before the uh, Silver Spirit 2 came out. So I hope it hasn't kind of taken parts from the two. You know, if there was like a crossover period, there's the other one there. So what I now need to do is undo these two bolts here to completely remove this kill switch so it can drop down. What's interesting is you might wonder what this is for. Well, look, you open this up and that will give you access to check your spare tire, the valve to make sure it's pumped up. So little things like that are just uh, kind of nice. Okay, that is the battery kill switch gone. I'm just gonna put the screws back in here so I don't lose them. Well, I'm gonna start with this side here because it's uh, gonna be easier to get to. Now the problem is, I think I'm probably going to have to buy a, uh, this is for undoing oil, oil filters, but I think on this one, I think you're probably going to need like a rubber strap version of this. This only just fits around it. It doesn't really even get to the last, I need to get it onto these notches here, you see, put it around here and it needs to go onto these notches. But uh, when I go onto the green ones that I've bought, they don't even get to, I think it gets to that one there, but it might do. It might do. I'm going to try with this, but if not, I'm going to have to buy myself a rubber one. So it's going to be lefty loosey. So once I get it on here, I'm going to have to be lifting it up towards the front of the car. I don't know how much of this is you're going to see. I've got my glasses on just in case there's still pressure in it. Obviously, I've still got the bleed nipple undone. My slight worry is, is if there was a blockage somewhere, then this side, could this side still be pressurized? I don't think it is because my suspension seems to be sat so low, but I don't really know. The brake pedals as loose as could be. So I don't think there's any pressure in the system. But again, remember, it's not a how-to video. This is just entertainment. You're just watching me do it. I might be doing it wrong. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to do this, see what happens. I've got an old rag ready as well, so I uh, I can mop up any leakage. Right. 
God. I think I'm going to go out of the car and try to uh, lift it up instead. Whoa! Ow! I think... I think that... Oh no, I broke the... Uh, I broke that. I thought it went, but I think I just broke this instead. Mind you, that's not such a big deal. That's just the uh, ring at the end. Thought it went there. The problem I've got is all that pressure. Well, it's not really all the pressure, but part of the pressure is going on the ring because it's just one notch short. If I had another one of these and it would fit onto that. And this, so what I might do is I might get a little nail to put through here and then the pressure will be on the nail, which will be a lot stronger. That will give me an extra link. Do you know what? I thought it gave and look, it has gone. I, uh, look. It's loose. Excellent result. Right, well, I presume there's no pressure there because I can't hear any hissing or anything like that. So I'm just going to put this up here to protect my little bit of carpet. Well, that wasn't actually too bad. The problem I've got is I don't actually know that these things are faulty. I'm just doing them because everybody says you need to replace them. But I don't know why the uh, suspension is not working properly. It could be something more brake related. Yeah, look at that, they're unscrewing. I'm just going to keep my face back. Here we go. Oh, right, well, there's definitely fluid in there. Looks very clean as well. Look at that. There. Do you know what? Maybe these are not faulty. And the fact that they're grey rather than green, maybe they've already been changed. I'm just going to mop it up in here. I'm just going to throw that in my uh, bucket with the other splurge stuff. Right, well, the mystery is solved why it's grey. Look at this. What do we spy here? Ta da Citroen. So this is a Citroen part. So it just shows you, I'd love to know the price of this. I wonder if it's half the price. Knowledge is power again. There you go, you see 95641464 I might Google that and see how much these cost. So definitely these have been replaced. There might be nothing wrong with these whatsoever. But uh, at the same time, would I risk fitting them somewhere else? Probably not, because you can get the Rolls Royce ones for uh, you know 80 odd quid. I don't know if they are Rolls Royce. They might be uh, you know a different brand. I'm not sure. But anyway, I think how this works is, if you imagine in here a trampoline, a little trampoline mat. Imagine somebody bouncing up and down. Well, the oil coming in is the person bouncing up and down. This side here is going to be filled with gas. So the whole system is pressurized, but when you go over a bump, the oil has to go somewhere because as the car dips down, it's going to shoot the oil, isn't it? So the oil has to go somewhere. So the oil will go in here and push the trampoline down, and then the gas will push the trampoline back up to let the oil go then back into the shocks and everywhere else to put the tire back up again, isn't it? So as it goes down, it's going to shoot into here, and as the tire goes up, it's going to shoot back into here. So imagine it like a spring, like a trampoline going like that. I think that's how they work. Okay, so we've got the same part number there for both of them, so it must be just standard the same on both sides. So what I've done is, you see this little o-ring here, I took it off and I just rubbed some of the old LHM from the Citroen one around here to uh, just give it a little bit of lubrication. So I now have to screw it back in. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to use the wrench on this one or whether I'm going to see if I can borrow or buy a rubber one. I'm not too sure because if the other side comes off, then I'll use the wrench to tighten them up as well. I'm just thinking that I might have to get the rubber one. But uh, I'll screw it on by hand to begin with. So here we go. Now I've got to be careful that I don't trap the washer. Or cross thread it. Ah, there we go. That's going on nice. Do you know what? I was dreading this job, but it's actually, I've really enjoyed it. Okay, well, the rubber doesn't look like it's all chewed up. Well, I can't even see the washer now, so it must have actually gone inside it. Let me just put my fingers around. Can't get to that side there. Well, I'm presuming the washer went in okay.
it's so nice to see the green pipe work here and for it to be perfectly clean because uh, underneath obviously it's all rusty and stuff so it's just lovely to see that I'd love to see one of these when they were new or completely restored where everything's immaculate underneath it would look lovely right okay that is on I am going to try to tighten up this well I've got a nail here instead so hopefully that will be thicker just snapped a bit on my wrench I've just snapped one of the uh, the teeth that I'm working on right okay well it's uh, it's game over for this wrench now so it'll still be fine for doing oil filters there's no point in persevering with that I am gonna have to buy myself one that's a shame so you see what's happened here can you see oh look one snapped off before yeah so I just snapped off that one there you can see one here one here but one's already snapped off so now that needs, it needs to go all the way over to there. It's probably still going to be fine for oil filters, but uh, it's not fine for this. Right, what I did is, because I really would like to get this tightened now, uh, I just drilled a hole straight through here because it was so soft to drill. And now, look, if I go in that one there, then the nail, some of these are thin, some are slightly wider, just how the chain is, uh, is made. So if I go there, right the way through there, that's not going to go anywhere. So, I reckon... That might be okay, I'll give it a go. Right, I'm on it. Right, just gonna put my glasses on because I haven't got that nail fully in there. Now let's go. There we go. Right, that is, that is tight. That is tight. Excellent. Oh wow, I was dreading that job for absolutely ages and it's turned out to be really enjoyable really 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 enjoyable there we go so i am so so happy with that i've got a new sphere how good is that i just hope the old ones are faulty otherwise well it's still worth doing it anyway so i am going to call it a day there because i think i've done enough for that video changed over the pipe work in there did that there and uh did this one here, I know you didn't see much of this one, but you're probably bored of me welding and stuff now. So uh, yeah, really, really, really happy with how that has gone. So in the next episode, I am going to tackle this side. I presume this is going to be a little bit harder because it seems like it's even more restricted for space, but you never know, it might be okay. And then I'm really looking forward to filling up the reservoirs. I've got two litre bottles, I think these are. Maybe I'll need to buy more, but believe it or not, you can actually buy this stuff in places like Halfords but uh, yeah we'll top it up and we'll see if it's going to make any difference or not it might not do but still at least that's one thing checked off and then we can uh, you know go forward from there so uh, that is it for this video if you enjoyed it give it a massive thumbs up and I will hopefully see you all very soon thanks so much for watching